Now this is the bottom half, this is the top half. Now that's how it's going to look. Because I have got two of these pockets uh, from two different denims, I'm going to use this on both sides of the bag. Okay, so because it's a little bit of hosh posh uh, pocket, what we need to do is you need to align uh, these two. I'm just going to hold this pocket and try and match it to the other one here. Usually they'll be pretty identical sizes. And uh, put a pin across and then feel the pocket and then that's quite, you know, that's quite identical. Um, place this at the center of the piece, the panel piece. And I'm going to make it into a U-shape because I think that's going to look quite nice. So um, the way to do it is there is, I mean, this is like design as you go. So there isn't any hard and fast rule. Basically, I'm just going to do that and uh, try and get a neat shape. I should have patched this up the other way around so that it, it's more of a kind of a shape going in line, keeping in line with this. But anyway, I can't help it now because um, I've already joined this, so I've got to go with what I have got. Anyway, I'm just going to use this one. Um, the way there are several ways to join this pocket. Now, obviously, because this is a round, this has got a U uh, shape around it. It's very difficult to fold it in and do it. So the best way to do um, the other way we could have done would be to have the pocket, uh, the bottom of the pocket, go into the seam of the lining and have it like square. But you will have one, two, and another piece of denim that goes into the gusset to sew. So normal sewing machines sometimes don't handle so many layers of denim. So it's best to keep it to minimum. So I'm just going to cut a straight line across. And because this is all going to be uh, lined in bias binding, I'm going to use this um, bias binding tape and just go ahead and bind uh, all around because black is going to the matching theme for this bag. I have taken a straight line. Uh, I have to also taken a little bit extra on each side. Now I've got a bundle of this, so uh, let me show you how I do it. I'll take, I'll just measure this all the way around. And when I come to the end, I take about two inches extra. You will see why I need this later on. So I'll just cut this off. I can just press it with my fingers and it makes quite a nice squeeze mark. Also, if uh, you're using a polyester one, then you might need to iron it right at, you know, folding the center. Okay, right now my needle is in the center, aligned with the center of the foot. Now take the, um, take the fabric, the, basically just hold it, basically just place the bias binding into the fabric quite securely on both the sides. Go ahead and sew at the edge of the binding. If you find it difficult to do this, you might want to tack this with hand stitching. The stitch length needs to be quite long. You don't need a small stitch length for this because this is just a safety one. As you go along, just nest the fabric right inside the center of the binding. At the end, because we had a little bit extra, there's a little bit extra there, so we'll just trim that off. Okay, now it's tricky and you need to watch this carefully. The next step is going to be like there. That's how we need to start. However, we need to finish the edge because we can't leave this raw edge here. So I'm going to just fold it, fold the edges in and just press it so that I get a crease mark. And then, again, just fold this corner so that we don't get nasty surprises as we sew. And just fold this, sorry, it's a little bit tricky, uh, fold this corner as well. And then press it in the center again. That way we get a very neat edge. And align that with the fabric here and then hold it in and place it my needle is inside the machine 
my needle is dropped in that way I will get a secure stitch right from the beginning and then I start sewing in sometimes you need to give the machine a little bit of push by lifting the presser foot up and down and now I go and sew as I come to the round bend here I just need to pull okay I just need to pull the binding ever so slightly not your fabric just your binding ever so slightly so I get a neat u-shape and as you come to the straight line don't pull it just let it go normally Again, as we come to the bend, as we come to the U-bend, then I just start pulling it. Okay, we're coming to the end, end now. I trim, I leave about an inch and then I trim the excess off. Okay, I fold it exactly how much is needed and like we did, like we did in the beginning, tuck one edge in and then tuck the other edge in and then fold this again and then make a marking there and that should line up perfectly yep okay let me show show in close up can you see how neatly this is finished and if i show you the other corner and this way as well and all the way around okay both my pockets are uh, edge finished and this is the um, the dark one and that's the light one so I'm going to place this and just make sure that it is well away from the bottom and you need half an inch there so I'm just keeping it about five centimeters away from the top and I just go ahead and pin it and now what I do I just go and do an eight stitch all, all the way around going up till there and that's my pocket opening to patch my pocket I've, I've put my needle in the center of the presser foot I'm going to start with the back stitch and then and go all the way around doing an eight stitch with the back stitch okay this is one of the panels where I have attached the pocket now we're going to go and attach the top panel so lay your top panel of the bag next to each other like this um, it's fine so just flip this over secure it with a few pins and go and sew a straight stitch Starting and finishing with the back stitch, so a half an inch seam. We have done a straight stitch joining the top and bottom of the bag. We now need to press the seams open.
Okay, because denim is a thicker fabric, just by ironing it flat, it won't sit flat. This will get back to its original position and then uh, sort of create a bulk when you start washing the bag. So I'm going to go turn it around and on either side I'm going to sew a top stitch. I've, I've decided to do a little decorative stitch on either side instead of doing a plain top stitch. So I'm placing the edge of my presser foot to align I'm placing the edge of my presser foot aligning to the center join of the fabric and then start sewing. Go ahead and do the same on the other side. We've done the top stitch here. See that's sitting quite flat and neat. Now we go ahead and join. The next thing is we're just going to fold this into half and take the top part of this bag and sew a half inch seam from one end to the other end starting and finishing with the back stitch. We're going to go ahead and press the seams open and sew a top stitch on both sides like we did before. You can see the bag is almost taking shape. At this stage what I noticed was because we have put a big pocket um, it also almost tends to kind of fall like this because if you keep things in like mobile phones or chargers or anything else then people will be able to see and it is in the view. So to make it safer and also to put smaller items in it's probably best to go and sew where we have done the seamless zigzag join. So that's what I have done on this one and see now if the pocket doesn't open up and there's still sp plenty of space to put the things in and even and we've got double pockets because we have used the denim pockets that was there in the trousers. The next step is we are going to attach the gusset to the denim part so basically this should be more than enough. Um, if you're a confident sewer then go ahead and just place it and then sew. If you find it difficult to turn the corners then it might be a good idea just to pin all around and then sew because the pattern fits perfectly. Sometimes you may get a little bit extra of this because if it's a stretchy fabric then it might stretch a little bit but really doesn't matter. If you get a little bit excess just trim this off. Okay I have pinned the gusset into the fabric so I'm just going to go ahead and sew. Sew a normal half an inch stitch starting and finishing with the back stitch. Okay, we have now sewn the gusset into the bag. What is important now is uh, the other part of the bag sits neatly into this gusset. In case if there's a little bit of, um, uh, in case if it moves a little bit, uh, say for example you made some mistake in uh, putting them together, then it won't sit properly. So what I would like you to do is, um, you know, just go ahead, your denim will have, uh, this part will have a notch mark here and uh, go ahead and fold that notch mark and get an exact position for the gusset and make a notch mark at the other end. So now you have got the center point. So what I do, I go ahead and take the um, other panel, match the two notches together and then pin it and start pinning it from here to here and from here to here. So if you have any excess then it will be on these two ends here. I would advise you to pin this first before you go ahead even if you are a confident sewer. Okay now I have pinned all around and I'm quite happy the way it's sitting because I, I can already see the bag panels are sitting quite the way it needs to sit. I'll go ahead and sew the other side of the gusset. I'm not going to film this but I'll show you the next step. Okay, I have sewn both sides of the gusset and quite exhausted and I'm going to take a break 
just before I do that I'm just going to turn it around because this is quite exciting I can almost see the back taking shape so once the lining is in this is how the bag's going to look like so anyway um, that's quite a substantial big bag and um, 